Ladies and gentlemen, Juan Romero here from Switchwatch and this is my review of Stranded Sales. Hope you're all doing well, looking forward to the weekend as much as I am. If you're a new watcher here, then you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification for your chance to be in the draw to win a Nintendo Switch Lite and Zelda Link's Awakening, which we'll be giving away when we hit 50,000 subscribers. For all of you that have continued to support us, a massive thank you from the Switch Watch team. You're already in the draw, so nothing more that you need to do there. Now let's get on with this stranded sales review. The story is a rather simplistic hey. one, which has been told time and time again in the past. You set sail with your father on a new adventure, but on the way you become shipwrecked on a mysterious island. Here your adventure begins and you'll need to explore the mysteries of the island and the surrounding ones either by foot or by a little boat that you get to build. I was however really disappointed with the characters that you meet which in essence are your crew which are dispersed all over the place and it's up to you to recover them and build a camp and then expand it. There's just not much depth to them at all and it would have been great had they expanded on these characters a little bit more with some backstories or stuff like that really. In terms of the gameplay look, Stranded Sails is described as an open world adventure in which you're able to explore, farm and expand your camp. All of these things I'm sure you've done in other games. It's driven by story led quests and so in effect is rather linear. Now, have you ever watched one of those films or movies that starts really slowly and you begin to ask yourself, is this ever going to take off? I call these slow burners and my god, Stranded Sails is a real slow burner. The first few hours or more are spent learning the ropes, getting all of your crew back onto the main island, which seems to take forever and a day as each quest set involves running up and down or rowing from island to island on your boat looking for something. Each crew member will then teach you something new, a new skill, either growing crops, fishing, cooking, or building cabins. And man, oh man, will you have to build a load of those. You can discover items for crafting those cabins, which are not that well hidden, to be honest, and are rather easy to find. Now, it all sounds rather good, but Stranded Sails is a game I decided to play with my daughter, who is five years old now, and see if she would like this more than I did. Now, every time she would move the character around, which is nice and simple, I would read what the NPCs would say to her so she could understand. And for example, when you set off on your adventure, you're required to carry out a couple of really mundane tasks like bringing some apples aboard the ship or getting the sails prepared or cut the cords from the deck so that you can set sail. A little bit of a tutorial in effect and well, she took to it like a duck to water as long as I read what was being said. And for the most part, she enjoyed it as it is a simple enough game for younger players to play. Now, when you do become shipwrecked, then there are further tutorials in how you grow your crops so you can feed the crew to make sure there's enough food for yourself when you explore each island without perishing. And this has a mixture of all those games that you probably love. A bit of Zelda for exploration, Stardew Valley for growing those crops, and then there's those survival mechanics which are also thrown in. You see, every time you walk or run in this game and decide to leave your camp, a little blue stamina bar will begin to dissipate, which can only be filled up by either sleeping in the relevant place or by chomping on something. Hence, why you need to grow a constant supply of crops in the first place. Grow a constant supply of crops for these expeditions so you can cook with them. And well, it's a great little game to teach young ones about crop survival and so on. And if you're like me with kids, well, this is a simple enough game that they can play with your supervision. And, well, it's good entry so that they can learn what these types of games are all about. However, for me, I found each task to be ultimately rather boring, time-consuming, and most of the objectives revolved around simple fetch quests, and it does become tiresome and repetitive rather quickly. The depth here is sadly lacking. You can't compare this to a game, say, like Stardew Valley. It's just far too simplistic but maybe that's the point. It's meant for a younger audience. And well, my little one was certainly into it until she had to build the millionth cabin 
and said she'd had enough. Now there are a number of islands as I said to explore where the stamina bar is a bit of a hindrance. It's like the developers tried to throw in everything they liked in other games and in the end this masters none of those games it takes inspiration from. Works well enough but as a game it ultimately isn't that much fun. When I'm exploring, I'm constantly worrying about that stamina bar, which means most expeditions are cut shorter than I would like once all my food reserves are gone. Even if you run out of stamina, all that really happens is you end up at base camp, which is not much of a punishment, so why have it in the first place? And whenever you're out exploring, if your stamina bar gets low, you can just return to base by clicking on the map, so in effect, you can totally bypass passing out by just having a nap at the base camp by going back there by a simple click of a button. Again, I just don't see much point in it being here unless there are some consequences. Maybe they should make a mode where death means death and that would make it rather more interesting. On top of that, there's some bugs that I came across which are not the most pleasant. Sometimes you can get stuck in a menu which you can't come out of unless you completely restart the game and others I was unable to complete certain quests without restarting the game which was painful. Now, in terms of audio it's rather nice it's relaxing it certainly suits the game to a T and I certainly have no complaint I think a very decent job has been done in this indie. Have a listen for yourself and let me know in the comments down below what you think. <laughs> In terms of the visuals and performance, well, they're either to your taste or they won't be. It's a low polygon design, and while it looks nice enough, nice bright colors used, and it does have a sort of day-night cycle, it does lack detail at times. So for me, it's not always been my favorite type of design, but as I say, it's pleasant enough, and for a younger audience, works perfectly. Performance though was a little bit iffy at times. The game saves automatically and as it does so, it really makes the game chug, especially when at sea in your tiny little boat. And as the game does this often, it can really annoy you. In terms of value then, the game is $21.49 and in the UK is £16.99. 15% off at the moment and the price is going to go up on October 30th. Now, I would suggest the price goes lower than the sale price because I just don't think, as it stands, it's worth this price. While you'll no doubt get a good load of hours out of it, it's only this long due to the amount of back and forth you have to go through. There's just so much competition at this price, and it's very hard to recommend for what this game currently offers. Now look, I love what Merge publish, and they usually publish some fantastic games. However, on this one, I would say, wait for a sale. In terms of my verdict then, Stranded Sales is a game that tried hard to fuse lots of elements from other games, farming, survival, exploration, in a simplistic sort of way. And some of these mechanics really fit with the game, and others don't, like the stamina bar, for example, which is more of a hindrance to your experience than anything else. It's a relaxing experience, and the music is really nice here, and the visuals are bright and colourful. And I would say it's certainly a game for a younger audience if you want to start them off learning such games like this one. For everyone else, though, that likes the mechanics that this game's tried to implement, Check out Stargy Valley, Harvest Moon, or even Zelda Link's Awakening if you like a little bit of adventure and exploration. Those games certainly implement what this has tried to do in a better way. However, this for me though, still a 6 out of 10, as long as it's aimed at a younger audience. For those of you where this game does pique your interest, consider waiting for a sale. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, then please consider leaving us a like and a comment down below letting us know your thoughts on this particular game and the review itself. Really appreciate you watching and don't forget if you're a new watcher here, then consider subscribing for your chance to win a Nintendo Switch Lite and Link's Awakening. My name's Juan Romero from Switchwatch. See you again soon on the next one. Take care.